Hello, Charlie. Hello, Jess. Oh. Just waiting for a few more people to... Well, rather join. rather critically, Oleg would be helpful. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just, He's uh, still got a minute. We've just, done a, test, a we just done a test room, which we had a couple of very eager Beaver listeners to. Uh, so uh, he hopefully should be able to find it. Let me just back channel on uh, Discord to him. And guys in the room, do please tweet, ping out to your followers uh, that this is happening. Uh, we'd love to fill this room with as many people as possible. So any tweets would be hugely appreciated. Also, I have just sent out a tweet from the Sweat Economy handle. So you can also retweet that and that's got the link in it. Testing, testing. Can you hear me, guys? We can hear you. We hear you. Nice. People trickling in. They yeah. are, and giving us some emoji love as well. Come on, a bit more emoji yeah. love, please. <laughs> They're silly, aren't they? Vintage Vic has joined the room. Ah, one of the one of the most frequent questioners. I know, I'm not sure we should allow him on stage today because he always asks in our AMAs and I'm too nervous. Apparently if I get his name wrong again, I have to give him some sweat. So uh, I uh, <laughs> got to resist that. Always ask good questions, yeah. He does. Right, I think, should we get going? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Oleg, you ready? Yep. Great. Um, welcome, everyone, to the first SweaterCon Twitter AMA. We have had two AMAs already, as I'm sure you're aware, on our community Discord channel. But this is the first one we've hosted on Twitter, and we're really excited to bring our news and our vision to this community. It is our largest community, um, and it's pretty incredible how quickly it's grown. Let me just start by introducing myself. I am Charlie Child, Head of Content for Sweat Economy. And I'm joined on stage by Oleg Fomenko, one of the co-founders, and of course, our CMO, Jess Butcher. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. And thank you, most importantly, for asking so many questions. One of the things we see a lot of by managing the Twitter is lots and lots of really great questions. Everything from basic step conversion issues to really insightful questions about our tokenomics, about the NFTs, roadmaps, and of course, the light paper. So in this AMA, we're going to cover all of it, if we can. Big task, but we've got some time, and it's really important for us to answer these questions. Um, we really value your support, and we don't want to let the questions go unanswered. So that's why we're doing this AMA. Let me just run through the format uh, for the day. So first of all, we're going to hear from Oleg, co-founder, who's going to walk us through the vision behind Sweat and Sweat Economy. And then we'll move on to some questions that you've been posting across the Twitter for the past month, and um, specifically questions that were posted in reply to the tweet that we sent out yesterday announcing this AMA. Lots and lots of great questions, and we'll try and answer as many as we can in the time we have. Then towards the end, we'll open up the stage as we've done in the last two AMAs to allow you to raise your hands and uh, well, Jess will, or I will bring you up to the stage and you can ask your questions directly to Oleg and me and Jess. Hopefully we'll cover everything, but there's always going to be another question. And that's why we do that section at the end. Um, yeah, and to close, we'll just finish with an announcement about the next community competition. Right. Without further ado, Jess, I think you want to highlight some of the great news from the past month. I'm happy for you to do that. You do it. I, I talk all the time on these AMAs. I think you should highlight the great news, Charlie. Sure thing. Okay. Um, so, we, you know, we're only one month old as a project. Of course, Sweatcoin goes back a while, but Sweat Economy started from zero. And in a month, we got 170,000 members in our community. This is, as you are aware, an incredible number. Lots and lots of projects never make it to such a number. The fact that you have all joined this movement in a, in one month only 
is a real testament to the, of the project of the vision and the simple fact that people love to earn something for their steps. So we are thrilled by the noise you're making and by the support you're showing for our community. The next thing to say is obviously the wallets. We created 5 million within the first month and we're about to hit six. This does make us, we believe, the biggest on-ramp in Web3 history and the biggest on-ramp from Web2 to Web3. The amount of people we're converting is, is huge. And that is really part of our vision and why we're making the Sweat Wallet app a hub for everyone, beginners and crypto natives alike, to get involved. It's really interesting to note that Ilya, uh, the founder and CEO of Near, the game we're building with, called us in a tweet, the fastest growing Web3 app ever. And I think that's pretty incredible and something that we're really delighted to share. Um, and obviously, thanks goes to you because it wouldn't be possible without you. Um, and in the first month, on to the most important thing, our op the users who have opted in to crypto have walked 126 million kilometers cumulatively in that month. That is the equivalent of 327 journeys to the moon, all in steps. That is why we're in this business. That's why we set it up. And I think that's just amazing. It's a massive volume. Um, and as you know, people on average after downloading the app are 20% more active. So we're really thrilled with the results from the first month, but we know this is just the beginning. Um, and yeah, I would just like to round out on the first month update and move on with the AMA. So the first thing on the table is for you to hear a little bit from our co-founder and co-founder of Sweatcoin, the original app. Um, Oleg, great to have you on stage with me. Hi hey guys, you. great to be here. It would be really great, I think, um, for the community, this new community who's never had an AMA before, to hear about the vision behind Sweatcoin. So if you could start by saying why um, and when did you start Sweatcoin? Um, great question. Thank you very much, Charlie. And great to be here, guys. And uh, thank you very much for joining uh, this, uh, at least my first this is, uh, um, AMA. Uh, we started uh, back in 2015. As the name suggests, we were thinking about blockchain already back then. But why we started was not for blockchain's sake. We started to make the world more physically active. And the reason why we started, because it was a, it's a personal problem. Um, my previous business, unfortunately, perished in a very strange circumstances. And I went for a run to clear my head and a barely com complete 5K run, which was extremely disappointing because literally three years before I was able to climb some of the highest mountains in the world. And here I am holding to my chest, you know, trying to figure out, you know, kind of what happened. And me and my co-founder, we started thinking, uh, you know, how come that people are losing fitness? How come that everyone wants to be fitter? than they are right now. And we very quickly found that actually the reason why we are not moving as much as we want to is because nature didn't, doesn't want us to. Nature didn't build us to be active. Nature built us to survive. And it gave us this behavioral feature, well, right now it's more of a bug, called present bias. That says effectively run when there is uh, food or pleasure uh, or when there is something scary happening. Uh, so when, you know, kind of many, many moons ago, uh, we would run when there is mammoths showing up or when there is a saber toothed tiger is about to make a meal of us. Otherwise, we just sit in front of a fire preserving those calories, which is very much what we do right now between meals. There is no scarcity right now. Meals are coming thick and fast, but we continue sitting between those meals. And for us to overcome this present bias, there is only one solution called instant gratification. So we've decided that we're going to create instant gratification for physical activity. And we've created Sweatcoin as a simplest possible way of turning your relationship with the step into something that is um, sort of gratifying, that you, know, kind of you feel is uh, not about calorie burning, but enriching you and making you feel better. So you know, the idea was to make the world more physically active. And as I mentioned, we started in 2015, we exploded, and already by 2017, we were processing several hundred transactions per second at peak. And we were very happy that we start on blockchain because you know, can people here, uh, I'm sure, aware 
that back then there were only two blockchains in existence. Bitcoin that processes about eight transactions per second. And we're not talking about 800, we're talking about eight. Or there was uh, Ethereum that processes 15, 16 transactions per second. We were processing already several hundred transactions per second at peak. So, you know, every year we were looking back into blockchain space, trying to find where and with whom we can partner. And then till last year, the answer was nobody because we were too big, too high scale, too, you know, big requirements or too, you know, kind of too fast of a requirement for anyone to be able to uh, support us. And until last year, we finally found our partner near uh, on whom we're building right now. So coming back to your question, um, you know, Charlie, our vision was to make the world physically active. We were committed to it. We are committed to it. And we will continue building, not for crypto for crypto's sake, but crypto as a mechanism, as a way to bring health and wealth together. I think that's um, really interesting what you say at the end about it's not crypto for crypto's sake alone. There is crypto has so much that it can offer. And it would be great, I think, to speak a little bit to that that movement um, from Web2 and what you believe that Web3 and crypto unlocks, what new possibilities it can offer to creating a true incentive for movement globally. Mm, fantastic question. Um, as, uh, as, as you know, we started in 2018 and it was a Web2 business. We built it to... So close to 80 million uh, users. Right now we're 86, uh, probably even 87. And we made it profitable by figuring out how to, um, how to, you know, how to basically generate uh, uh, revenues. And the three sources of revenue that worked for us already in Web2 were partners, because they value tremendously your physical activity and they wanted to get exposed to people who are physically active or who are trying to be physically active. The other group are the advertisers that also came for exactly the same reason, because if your health, sport, fitness, and vanity, um, you know, nutrition brand, it, you, know, can, you are a fantastic audience. Because if you're paying attention to physical activity, you are paying attention to your body, you are paying attention to a lot of other aspects of health. So, you know, kind of advertising is a second revenue stream. The third revenue stream is users. You know, kind of a lot of users are paying for premium subscription. Now, there are certain limitations that Web 2 imposes on us. When we move into Web 3, that opens an incredible amount of possibilities like, you know, to 10x, 100x, possibly 1,000x the whole uh, business. Because if you can imagine that we managed to build this very, very big and kind of economically viable business on the token or other point system, Sweatcoin, that is centralized, that is inflationary because you do get one Sweatcoin for 1,000 steps as more users coming in and they become more active, as Charlie said, by 20%, the monetary mass is growing. And the third thing is that Sweatcoin is only usable inside our existing application. These are serious limitations. Now, imagine what we accomplish and how many additional new streams are becoming available if we're becoming decentralized, if we're becoming deflationary, and if we are able to uh, you know, allow our token, SWAT token, that we're going to be launching this summer to be accepted anywhere and everywhere where crypto is accepted. You know, the, just to name the few uh, things that we are working on right now, we're working on very, very large scale partnerships because, again, large scale layer ones are very, very keen to attract you to you know, partake in their projects and you know, kind of experience uh, their ecosystems. And they're willing to put free product as well as pay us and you as a community to go, um, you know, to go and, and enjoy those ecosystems. We also have a fantastic interest in other projects that are not focusing on steps, so walk and running, but on other types of sports to be able to work with us and run alternative move validators, for example, for swimming or for cycling or for high intensity training, CrossFit. 
so that you know kind of they would be able to participate in our ecosystem and use us as a platform and for you to be able to earn sweat for you know being in the gym and doing physical activity they will take care of validation and ensuring that this is not shaking you know kind of and and some gaming of the system but it's a genuine physical activity and we will allow them to run uh, validators that will be able to issue sweat. In order to run that, of course, they will need to stake quite a substantial amount of sweat to preclude nefarious behavior. So that is something that is definitely not possible to do in Web2. And last but not least, a very exciting use case that you know, kind of we feel is going to be generating huge amount of revenue for you, the community, and for us that will be DAO by them is the data, move to physical activity data. Um, it's important to note that we never did share data uh, with third parties. We don't do it, and we're not planning to do it until we decentralize and become DAO. At that moment, what we want to do is to allow you, the owner of your data, to make it available to third parties. So not us making a decision, not us making money, but you making that decision and therefore uh, being able to participate in the process where third parties will pay for the data to understand what's happening with levels of physical activity in uh, different countries and different regions. And money made uh, on this are going to go to you with platform, the DAO, taking a, uh, taking a fee. Wow. Back to you, Charlie. <laughs> Thank you, Oleg. That was really fascinating. And I think what you said at the end there is... Um particularly resonates with um, anyone who's really interested in crypto, giving ownership back to the individual is really what crypto is all about. And, you know, that's, that's why the DAO is being created. And yeah, I think that's just a really powerful and important point, one of principle, but also one that will increase the reward for one's individual movement. Right. I think that's, that's a really great introduction, um, an extensive and brief at the same time, history of Bitcoin. Um, let's move on to the comments that have been submitted by the community. I think we're gonna start with going through the fundamentals before going on to some of the tokenomics questions. The first thing I'd like to say is thank you everyone who submitted questions, both on Twitter, um, to the Twitter post that was put out yesterday and over the past month. Um, we know it takes, it means you have to take time to think about your questions it means you care to some degree and we value that so we're going to go through as many as we can um, and let's see how we do all right the first question that we've got here and i think it's one that's really worth clarifying early on will sweat have its own unique app or will it be part of the same sweat coin app and if you could speak a little to the relationship between the two apps that would be great um thank you charlie Yes, there will be a separate app that will be called Sweat Wallet, where you will be managing your um, sweat, the token. Uh, however, what will remain as a source, as a sort of the, 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 the supplier of the raw data for analysis of your movement, it's going to be the remaining Sweatcoin app. So uh, what will happen after TGE is that the first 5,000 steps that will be tracked through Sweatcoin app, if you opted in to play crypto game, uh, will be going into validator. And instead of being converted into five sweat coins, they will be going through a smart contract and you will get issued sweat at an ever increasing level of meeting difficulties. So that, you know, kind of on the day of TGE, you will earn first sweat at 1,000 steps the next one might be, you know, 1,001, 1,002, et cetera, et cetera. And it's cumulative across all users. So, you know, kind of, if you are taking a three-day break, you might come back and discover that, you know, kind of the, the minting difficulty of the next sweat has grown quite, um, quite substantially. But sweat, the token, will arrive to sweat wallet that will effectively be your uh, kind of fintech app. It's going to, you know, kind of all the functionalities to use sweat, so transferring, receiving, sending, um, staking, or um, um, obtaining and interacting with uh, NFTs are all going to be uh, based in uh, sweat wallet. 
Great. Thank you, Ale. Um, and I think what you say about the minting difficulty, just to give an idea of the uh, the rate of increase, if 1,000 snaps has an effective rate of one sweat at TGE, within five years, you would need 16,000 snaps to create one sweat. In 10 years, it's 45,000 to create one sweat. That doesn't mean that you need to take 45,000 steps in a day. That means that you'll get a fraction of a sweat as time goes on. Important part of creating um, an ever decreasing rate of emission. Right, back to the questions. Um, Oleg, there's a question posted yesterday um, and it's about, is there a way to offer different levels of reward? Because we're going to have those who really want to grind and earn sweat, going to be logging on every day, counting their steps and trying to improve every day. And then there are going to be people who install the app and kind of leave it running in the background and don't take much notice of it. How will and will there be a way to distinguish, other than the obvious one might earn more if they're more interested in taking steps, will there be other ways of in, of creating a gradation of engagement? No, absolutely. Um, it's not going to be one size uh, fits all, but the main differentiation, of course, is going to be the level of uh, activity. So if you're walking 1,000 steps per day versus somebody who walks 5,000 steps per day, you're going to be earning five times more uh, sweat. The uh, level of engagement and participation is definitely going to be reflected in uh, um, aspects like NFTs and some other aspects that you know would be too early to be uh, mentioning and talking about uh, um, at this stage. However, one thing that you know we need to uh, we need to draw out is that still the objective and the mission of the project is to make the world more physically active. So other aspects and other activities are not going to be as valuable and bring as much benefit as sort of maximizing and sort of maxing out your allowed steps per day. The things we are toying with, but don't hold my feet to fire um, in terms of implementing is possibility of requiring higher daily limits. For example, 5,000 steps will be a universal limit, but you might be able to buy 1,000 or an extra 2,000 steps that um, you know will increase your effective uh, um, you know kind of earning ability per day. So there is a lot of stuff that is uh, being developed and built. Uh, but as I mentioned, don't hold my feet to fire if it's not landing in sweat wallet uh, right at the TGP. Thank you, thank you. And I think um, another thing to say about the different kind of gradations would be the way that NFTs are gonna have different tiers. And that's an obvious way. There will be easy ways into NFTs and then there'll be ones who really want to grind. Right, um, another really great question from the community. Um, and we've had a lot of this. Uh, Move to Earn is such a popular uh, movement at the moment. And you know, there's one popping up every other month, as it were. What distinguishes Sweat and Sweat Economy from all the other players out there? Fantastic question. Um, so, first of all, you know, kind of starting point, we are a business of 86, 87 million users that has a history of five years. We figured out answers to a lot of questions and we're taking all of this sort of extremely seriously. Um, if we're talking about the actual sort of nature of our project, the objectives that we have, are fundamentally quite different. If you look at the structure of other projects, they will be by large governed by this principle pay to play or pay to move because you have to spend quite a lot of money up front to be able to participate in them. Our mission is to make the world more physically active. So our interest is bring in hundreds of millions and you know possibly next billion people into being more physically active and into Web3, which means that we are not about putting a barrier at the joining, but about engagement and about taking all the users on a 
long journey that is making them healthier and wealthier. And the, um, and, the, and, and the third thing is that we are definitely building not a business that is only living off revenues from users. That makes it quite challenging. If you just sort of think about it, a lot of the projects out there would charge you money and they would promise that you would earn more than they charged you. And the only source of revenue that they have is you. How are they generating these additional revenues and how sustainable those models are is anyone's guess. But what we know is how to diversify our revenues and how to bring in money from other projects other than charging our users for the pleasure of participating. Great, yeah. It's a really strong proposition that this is, this is for everyone. It's not just for people who have $1,000 to spend on an NFT. That's not how you're gonna get the next billion people walking and that's really the mission. Um, I think something that we already covered slightly with the idea of movement validation, but the question is ever so slightly different. Will, when we create this open economy of movement, will it be possible to include other activities, things that are beyond steps, beyond walking and running and hiking? For example, things like cycling, skiing, swimming. What are the plans for that and how do you see that rolling out? Um, I absolutely love this question. I think I alluded to this uh, a little bit earlier. We're very keen to build an ecosystem and become a platform for other types of physical activity and other sports. And you know, rather than us doing these validators, there are a lot of businesses out there that specialize in you know, yoga, in uh, CrossFit, in cycling. And they understand a lot better how to validate, verify that the physical activity or the, you know, kind of session is genuine as opposed to, um, you know, sort of gaming or cheating. And we already have a number of parties like that keen to work with us and validators and enable earning of sweat the token through their apps using the, you know, alternative movement validator mechanism. Um, will this be available at TGE? No. Is this something in our roadmap? Absolutely. Have a look into our light paper or into our announcements, you know, across all channels. And, uh, um, you know, you'll see that this is something that we are foreseeing to be very busy with within the next couple of years. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think it's really important to cover that and give people an idea of the breadth of the vision we have for this. Um, another question from the community, which is a really interesting one it comes up all the time are you planning partnerships with fitness trainers um, to become ambassadors of sweat or and or healthcare providers um yeah or like over to you no absolutely we already are uh, working with a lot of uh, kols i you know just looking at attendees i see some you know people that we met on the path and have been you know, really, really helpful in promoting and pushing a uh, project forward. So we would be absolutely delighted to work with more uh, opinion leaders because we do believe that our project is unique in many different ways. Well, I would be, wouldn't I? <laughs> I'm quite biased here. But uh, let, me, let me substantiate this. And uh, the reason why I believe that we're quite unique is... Uh, because our, as a project, we are delivering a lot of value to uh, users or to the followers or to the audiences of key opinion leaders. So this is not the usual, let me promote this and sort of monetize uh, my ability to influence uh, these people. But it is actually recommending a product that is adding value to these people's lives, making them healthier and wealthier, while also allowing to monetize uh, working with this uh, audience. So we work already with hundreds of uh, key opinion leaders across different geographies and would be delighted to work with more. Great, great. I'm sure that'll be music to the community's ears. Um, I think one more question about the kind of fundamentals before we get into some of the details on the tokenomics. Um, the final question is 
one that we see a lot of on Twitter. It's about conversion issues when it comes to Android. A lot of um, our users at the moment are experiencing problems converting their steps, either counting their steps or converting those steps into sweat coins within the sweat coin app. Um, uh, we have answered this um, many times over the last month, but I think it's really important for everyone to understand what the underlying issue is. Oleg, if you could, if you could guide the community on what we've been experiencing here. Absolutely, Charlie, and uh, thank you very much for this question. And I can see that this question is going to be raised every single AMA. And uh, you know, uh, kind of before we go into details, let me just also assure you that what you're going to hear is not the only thing that we do as uh, as an organization. We do have an amazing team of some of the best Android developers in the world, very busy, constantly looking and finding ways of optimizing our app's performance on as many platforms as possible. Having said that, you know, we do know that the most basic and the most fundamental issue that you, know, you encounter if our app is not performing on your device is related to the simple fact that our app has to work in the background in order to collect not just the steps data that your phone detects, because I mean, many of you would be aware that it's very easy to trick your step into believing that shaking of your phone is actually walking. And there is even a website that, you know, um, if you attended previous AMAs, I, I, I must have mentioned it called unfit.com that teaches people on how to treat their mobiles and their wearables into believing that one is active when one is not. Absolutely favorite is using or is usage of the drill. So, you know, kind of we had to go through all of those use cases and make sure that our verification model is able to identify them and exclude those steps from being considered. So in order for this to work, in addition to just simple, you know, kind of step count that your phone detects, we do collect quite a lot of data. And for that, uh, our app needs to run in the background. What happens with a lot of uh, Android phone manufacturers is that they're trying to make their marketing stand out. And one of the most interesting claims is battery. In order to optimize battery life, they develop custom battery sort of optimizing routines that effectively kill apps in the background, you know, kind of ruthlessly and prevent us from operating. So in order for our app to function well, one needs to find all of those settings. And sometimes it's going to be one, sometimes two, sometimes even more, like from memory on Xiaomi, there were three different settings in three different places that needed to be flicked in order for our app to not getting killed in the background. So one thing that is extremely important here is don't swipe the app off to you know let it run and then pay attention to all of those sort of banners and suggestions to optimize those settings and if you know, can and, and do your own research. There are a lot of users out there on devices like yours that have figured out how to make apps work. And the app and the website that I'm using regularly uh, to help others is called don'tkillmyapp.com. There you can find a lot of different families of Android devices and recommended settings to prevent those devices from killing our app. Great, thank you. Thank you, Oleg. Um, so I think now is the time to move on to some tokenomics questions, things that have come up yesterday um, from the community. So the first question, we discussed in the lot previous AMAs and in activity that if a user falls below a given threshold of activity over a certain period of days, they will have their um, sweat sunk or removed in some way. Will that sweat be burned? And if so, will it be burned permanently? It's a very good question. Um, I think from a regulatory perspective, I don't want to go into terminology, um, but one you know, one thing that we know about inactivity fee, it is to benefit the whole uh, community. So, you know, let's call it a, you know, kind of token sync. The idea is that it should leave the circulation uh, or circulating supply for forever. Great, thank you. 
Um, and I think on that on that note, there have been lots of questions about um, uncapped supply, and that obviously the inactivity obviously obviously plays some role in making sure in reducing the level of circulating supply. Of course, it's a lot easier for people to understand capped supply, limited supply, and how that may influence a project, but it's not always the answer. Products such as Ethereum have been incredibly successful with uncapped supply. Could you speak to us a little bit about why is uncapped supply, why and how that is not the only factor to consider when you're talking about utility of the token? Very good uh, question, and thank you to those community members who asked uh, ask this. So as uh, you absolutely rightly singled out, the issue is not the supply. The issue is how well you as a project can control circulating supply. And um, you know, kind of the reason why we've chosen uncapped supply is very simple. If our mission is to make the world more physically active, it cannot be bound to, I don't know, five years or 10 years when you're effectively running out of your supply and you're starting to dig into, you know, 16th decimals, effectively making it impossible as, as a project to reward physical activity. So then what, you know, what would we effectively do? We would reward people for the next 10 years and then we'll say, sorry, you know, can, we cannot, you know your, your activity now cannot be rewarded, which would be quite a bad thing because based on trends right now, obesity and sedentary behavior are not going away and we're going to need to work even harder in 10 years time than we're working right now make value of your physical activity in 10 years even higher than it is right now. So we would like to have a way of having sweat being issued every year. What matters the most in the situation of uncapped supply, like Ethereum, is to have levers in the direction that allow you to sync this token in exchange for you know, some services that are provided uh, system or as you know uh, possible I don't know sort of pen penalties maybe not the right term but you know kind of let's go with it for now and that's you know that is the reason why um, you know an activity fee uh, is uh, you know direction that we are putting quite a lot of effort and research into because if we are about making the world more physically active and making your movement valuable it is extremely important that you don't run an ultra marathon and then spend the rest of the year or months doing absolutely nothing. It is about making uh, movement and physical activity an element of your day-to-day -day life. This will make you happier. This will make you live longer. This will make you more productive. This will make you a better father, mother, son, daughter, husband, wife, and you know, kind of going to create an lot of value to you, your family, your healthcare provider, your insurer, your employer, and your country. So, if people are ceasing to walk, not below a certain level, but actually, if they are stopping to walk, we believe that the small inactivity fee is in order, and not necessarily as a you know, kind of as a punishment, but as a way to deploy a um, you know such a behavioral. Uh, tool that is called loss aversion. So if you know that you know you'll be charged, for example, I don't know, hundred steps worth of sweat if you are not physically active, you probably will take those hundred steps, and that is hundred steps better <laughs> than, uh, than, than 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 not moving at all. So you know there are a huge number of other sync mechanisms that the team is working on and that we'll be announcing closer to, uh, to TGE. So looping back to the original question, the issue is not capped or uncapped supply. The issue is having token sinks mechanisms that reduce your token or circulating supply and ideally make it even deflationary. And we believe that we have these mechanisms. Uh, look into our light paper for a bit more details and closer to DGE, we'll be making further announcements on the details. Wow, thank you very much, Oleg. I think we've covered a huge amount of ground.
there in a very short space of time. But I'm aware that the clock is ticking and I really want to leave some space for the community to ask their questions to you live. So, Jess, I think yes. the best way for us to do this is to let people put their hands up, which you can do as an emoji. And if you put a hand up, it stays up permanently rather than the emojis which disappear. So yeah. uh, we'll see the requested and I'm the bouncer. So I'm going to bring people up uh, one by yeah. one. Just as an aside, Charlie, I've had a request that you could please do some narration on the Calm app uh, <laughs> due to your uh, gorgeous, gorgeous tone. So uh, beautifully handled MC. Uh, we have had Elger on stage for, for a while. Elger, welcome. It's lovely, lovely to have you here. Uh, if you did have any questions based on what you've heard, please, uh, please ask Oleg and, and, and kick us off. And I will also then start bringing people up roughly in the order and we're requesting. Uh, so yes. one by one. Thank you very much and uh, good morning uh, for the people in some part of the world and good afternoon and good night for depends where are you. Um, I actually lost because his voice is amazing and I even forgot what I want to say, but anyways. Um, I don't want to ask a question before I want to say my part since I'm, I'm following this project for a, a long time. Um, for the people who know me, um, you need to know this project and this project, it's not a normal project who are coming to the space. They are in Web 2 from 2015. So they made this project from the beginning just for the human and to have a better life and a better healthy life and a better lifestyle. And the only reason for them to come today uh, to become, to add this token is the request of the community because at that time there is no crypto, there is no nothing. And uh, now they're adding this touch, not because they want to come and jump into the Web3, because they see the potential to help everyone, including the Web2 and Web3. Uh, these people have big partnership, real partnership. These people have experience all over the year. They're not coming here to have you as a trial or a test. So if you want to find something good, if you want something find better for your life, better for your health, you go for people who are in the Web3 for many years and they have a very successful track record they're not trying on you you are the one benefiting from them and as you heard um the co-founder said um and i liked it really uh that some other project they might ask you to pay at the start and it's no longer your health it's longer it's more business oriented but here they made the tokenism right they got one of the best blockchains promising blockchains with big developers and big foundation and it's called near protocol and it has a big 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 support from top vcs and just to choose the best for you that you choose the what is ever can be 100 percent scalable for you and can 100 percent work right and correct for the community and for everyone because these people are not here to stay for two years for one year for a few months these people are going to stay for a very long time because how did I say that? Because they already been there from 2015. So if these people didn't know how to make it, they wouldn't even been till today. I'm quite sure many people, even from the US, when I'm telling them, said, "Yo, we know this project. We know this um, app. Have it in our wallet. My mom used it before. My mom's still using it. My sister, whatever. So it's not something new. And you can go search them now while we're speaking. Go, please. Go something called and on Apple Store and uh, Google Play. The one without." The old one that's working, but without the crypto, it's called Switchcoin. Go type it. Check it while we're speaking. These people that exist from a very, very long years. And um, I'm just going to add one question, if you don't mind, to Oleg. Um, we have so many people from the NFT space. And these people are a bit far from crypto. They barely know even Ethereum sometimes. Um, how can they benefit? How can we come close to their mindsets where this can be easy for them to be used because it's very important for them and important for everyone, but these people are a bit far from the crypto space. What is the best way for them to join and understand this? Wow. Um, thank you, Elja. Um, you know, well, thanks for your support, kind words. Thank you for mentioning Sweatcoin. Yes, if you don't have the app installed, please go and install it because uh, you'll appreciate having high balances for our TGE. And to uh, kind of to answer your question, yes, we definitely uh, have a roadmap the uh, NFT activation. And as I mentioned, unlike uh, a lot of other projects, we are not going to have uh, massively prohibitive uh, price points on them. Uh, everyone is going to be able to have a seed of an NFT, 
at your ability to raise, grow, and progress through layers of NFT and, you know, kind of make it evolve is going to depend on your um, kind of ability to bring in physical activity and convert it into, uh, into sweat. Um, you know, kind of, I don't think that I'm going to be releasing too much uh, if I were to say that we are definitely looking right now very actively towards generative uh, um, NFTs. We think they're going to be uh, very, very engaging. They're going to be very exciting. And we know that in the area of health and fitness, the look and something that conveys your commitment to the level of physical activity, to the shape of your body, to you looking after your body is, uh, you know, kind of very exciting, very, very important and can play a very important role in a message, in an image that you can wait, convey to the outside world. Good stuff, Oleg. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, yes, thank you again, Elder, for joining us and, uh, and for a great question and, and, and so much support. Hugely appreciated. Uh, let's get to the audience questions now. We had Muskie on stage with his hand up ever since the beginning of the session. Uh, and then we'll go next to Crypto Jun, who I'll bring up shortly. When you do come on uh, stage, if you could uh, uh, shut your mic off and then um, so there's no background noise, that would be great. Over to you, Muskie. Muskie, are you there? Do you have a question for Oleg? Love your profile, Muskie. Come in, Muskie. No, okay. Well, let's go to the um, let's go to the next speaker then. That is uh, Crypto John. Welcome to the stage. Hi. Um. Uh, it's a great great day to hear you guys about this sweat coin. Um. Good evening here in my place. If you're from Asia, and also good morning to the other parts of the uh, the world. Um, actually, I was excited when um, finally sweat coin was uh, is going to be tokenized into sweat. I've been in this. Uh, I was able to use this app since two thousand nineteen. Uh, originally, I'm actually a runner, so that's why I was really excited to and hyped up to be part of this community and be part of this revolution. Um, my question. Uh, first question is, uh, I, I think I was I missed the the early early part of this uh, space. Um, my question is, when or when do you plan to uh, add third party um, apps like Garmin or um, other devices like the Garmin watch, the Sunto, or um, what else? Um, Huawei watches, because I, I think that would be a better solution. When, when it comes to preserving the battery of the phones. I think one of my main issues with the battery when, when I first started using it way back 2019 is the battery. It, it consumes a lot of power. So I need to force stop or you know turn off it from the background while I use it. And another disadvantage when I use it is uh, it's a little bit bulky. So um, I think when, when I do my workouts, I, I more use it while you know, make it simple. Just use my watch instead of just using my uh, or bringing my phone. So that my to to repeat my first question is when will be the um, partnering with these companies like the Garmin? Uh, you know, the Garmin is always the the most popular ones uh, in most countries. Brilliant question. Thank you very much for for bringing it up. Um, so first of all, you know what. Well, it sounds like you're an OG. I think that, you know, 2019, what, just three years ago, uh, you know, respect that, you know, thank you very much for such a long-term support. Uh, you know, back to your question. We have done specifically a project on Garmin because I'm a huge fan and I believe that they produce, you know, kind of amazing kit. Um, there is one issue with, uh, with, uh, with their kit is that it's not secure enough. Um, and the question is very simple. Um, they don't need to verify physical activity. They don't need to secure their devices because their point of view is, well, if you want to trick yourself into believing that, you know, you walked 100,000 steps when you walk on the 10, be our guest, you know, that this is a silly thing to do. Our use case is quite different because we all of a sudden create motivation in people in potentially you know, cheating, tricking uh, the, you know, the wearable into believing that, uh, you know, you are physically active. 
So, you know, after really quite in-depth research, we've put it that, you know, kind of the system um, is impossible to secure so that somebody cannot impersonate a kind of device as a, as a Garmin and potentially inject false information about your level of physical activity. And in things like this, we, of course, cannot, you know, enable that device because it's effectively going to be a security hole. There is a device that is secure enough, and it's uh, Apple Watch. So our app works really well on, um, uh, on that device. We are intending to do a lot more work and research into um, Google Wear. When Fit migrates onto Google Wear, um, we intend to uh, build an app for, uh, for Google Wear because that is going to become quite a significant uh, chunk of the market. Great. Thanks, Oleg. Um, conscious that we've got quite a few hands up and I want to get through as many as possible. So um, if you could keep your questions as short and sweet uh, and perhaps your answers too, Oleg, possible, uh, unless you fall down a rabbit hole. Um, but next up, we have Vintage Vic. You're up. What's your question? Um, hello, Jess. Hello, Oleg. Hello, everyone. Hi. Nice to see you again. Okay, so for further for use cases, if... Um, um, the company is talking to or uh, trying to partner with some um, membership brands so people can, um, users can pay for the gym membership with Sweat um, just to provide more further use cases for Sweat. Thanks for the question. Uh, I think over the years we already had a lot of partnerships uh, like that. Um, so we're totally open to, uh, to these conversations. We are more than happy to give exposure to uh, chains that are keen to uh, give special deals, unique deals to our users in exchange to, you know, for, for, for their physical activity. So uh, this is not something that we haven't done. So we are very open and very keen. Okay, thank you. Great, thanks for, the, th thanks for your question, Vic. Uh, next up we have uh, Ethan. Ethan, what's your question for Oleg? Hi everyone. Um, um, my is not actually a question. I just want to say, um, Oleg, thanks so much. I since I got the app, I've been working like um, 20k and above steps every day, and it's really amazing. But as I'm speaking right now, I'm using the app as well. So I, um, it keeps um, physical fit and a good health. So thank you guys so much. And also, I would like to. Um, say that I saw that um, um, what's it called? This lunar guy, Dupuan, is one of the partners. So I don't know, uh, but the guy um, really messed up on crypto space. I <laughs> I don't really think it would be a good figure in our community, <laughs> honestly. So um, thanks, guys. That's um, what I have to say for now. And then. Thank you for bringing it up. I, um, you know, Doe has been a supporter for a long time. He really wanted us to build on Terra. Uh, thankfully, we did not make a decision to uh, follow his advice. He was very keen to invest because he uh, was, you know, kind of seeing huge potential in us becoming a mass market product. And, you know, he was absolutely right. Um, beyond this, he does not have participation in a product design or tokenomics. So, you know, kind of, um, I totally realize that, you know, kind of, that he doesn't have the best possible standing in the, uh, in the crypto world, but, you know, he's been, he's been with us and he's been a supporter for uh, a long time. And, you know, kind of, we feel that we should not be all of a sudden dropping his uh, name as an early supporter because of the recent uh, uh, developments. But rest assured, we are not picking up ideas on token economics and structuring of uh, the business uh, from Dow. Cheers, Alec. Okay, I'm just going to try Musky again, see if he's there to unmike. Uh, if not, we're coming to CryptoEt crypto next. Musky, are you there? 
Nope. Okay. Um, next up, X N F T Crypto X. What's your question for Oleg? Please keep it short and snappy, and we can get through a couple more. Ah, uh, hello. Good morning. I'm talking from New York City, New York, United States. Two things. Um, the first thing is like when. Well, I, first of all, I've been using the application since October 2009. I've been using it. Normally, I have accumulated a couple of coins already. But since I found out they were going to release in the blockchain, they're going to have their own coins. I definitely started going more at it. But I find out since we live, since I live in the in, in, in United States, I guess because of laws and stuff like that, I'm not able to gain sweat. But according to the website, later on on the summer, those coins that I have right now, they're going to be turning into sweat. Now my question is, what's the different, what the difference is between now and between the summer? Like for now, I can uh, basically own any crypto. Like, for example, if you go to other country, when you open the app, it says like something like, oh, you, you're earning this crypto, stuff like that, that they're going to be, uh, uh, they're going to be available in the, in, in, in the summer. But for me, as a, as a United States user, it doesn't say anything like that. So my question to you, what's the difference between now that now I cannot get that, and then in the summertime, then those coins they're gonna be automatically sweet to sweat when other members around the world they are already accumulating sweats. That's my first question. The second question is I don't know who's managing the Discord, but like I say, I'm, I'm being very bullish in the app since 2019. I got into the Discord, I started you know helping answering questions here and there. One day, a person was like, "Oh, there was some guy selling selling sweet coin for this amount of amount amount of price." And then, jokingly, me, I was like, "Oh, let me sell you this amount for X amount of money." But I, in that moment, I was jokingly because see, I'm very bullish in this project. I'm not gonna let go of my coins. So automatically, just because just because I say something at that at that time, I didn't know it wasn't appropriate. I got kicked off of the Discord with no warning. I didn't get no time, no time off. I didn't get anything. I just automatically kicked off. And to me, I felt that I was a little bit unfair that I was just kicked off just by jokingly in a matter that I didn't know that that was something that you could do in the in the server. So that's, I don't know, I would like to get back in the Discord, but since I've been kicked off, there's nothing that I can do right now unless you guys do something about it. And also, you know, I would like to go back and then, and I feel like it's fair for the community if some, someone says something that they're not supposed to say, they should give a warning or a time off instead of, yeah, instead of being just a, a, an automatically kick off of the server. Thank you. Thank you very much for, um, for, for raising these two points. The community managers are incognito attending this A, uh, so I'm, I'm sure they're taking notes. I think it's, it's probably fair to you know to 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 call the timeout as opposed to um, an immediate ban but let's you know kind of let us have this uh, conversation with regards to your first question um, on the sweat in the United States as you rightly singled it out uh, um, you know due to regulatory situation um, and interpretation of what sweat uh, is and it's a Utility token, however, you know, um, the, the US SEC, I believe, has a different point of view. Um, you know, we just simply not going to be able to run our TGE and our lock drop uh, for American residents. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's as simple as that. So, um, yeah, and, you know, unfortunately, I don't have a, a better answer. You cannot participate in TGE unless you you know, opt in and create a near wallet. And this functionality, for the reason I already mentioned, is not available in the US. Thanks, Oleg. Uh, I just wanted to make a quick note as well on the community side. So we have a really, really active and tremendous community on Discord. As you can understand, the file community grows and ours is growing very rapidly. Uh, the more you do tend to get people coming in and a few bad actors. So I know the community team worked very hard to sort of warn people first and foremost, um, and also, by the way, reward people uh, who are super helpful within that community as well. 
Uh, but as a rule, we tend not to ban outright, uh, but we can certainly look into that uh, for you. It's a, as I say, it's a great community. So please do join it if you're Discord users. Uh, there's loads of giveaways and all of our news um, gets, gets passed there first and foremost to the community. Uh, so do get involved. Uh, I think we've got, I think Oleg, you're happy to stay for another five minutes if we do a couple more questions. Yeah, I can do that. Great. Thanks so much. Okay, next up, we've got uh, Dang Trung Song. Uh, do you have a question? Yes. Yes. Please uh, keep brief. Yes. Can you hear me? We can. Okay. Uh, I uh, want to ask uh, you about uh, the time for TGE. Yes. Uh, Token yeah. generation event for those that does not, uh, don't know what, what it means. Uh no. Uh, I want to ask uh, for do you have uh, the correct time timing uh, for TGE? No, at the moment we're not ready to announce more precise uh, time. Uh, we are now committing to it being in summer, uh, and we are based uh, in northern hemisphere. So apologies to those that do not share so summer definition with us. So there was already a meme I've seen flying when summer. The summer is June, July, and August in our uh, definition. However, within next four weeks, I believe that we're going to have some more precise uh, details for you. So keep following our AMAs and our announcement channels. Okay. Uh, what about uh, IDEO? Do you uh, win, uh, come with uh, IDEO for people can buy it? Very good question. Uh, I cannot... Uh, possibly comment on uh, uh, on this right now because uh, because I can't. <laughs> okay. okay. Cryptic, cryptic. Okay. okay, thank you, Dan. Thanks very much for your question. Uh, next up, we've got Frank. Is it? Um, and you've got Sweatcoin Taiwan in your in your name. I like it. Representing yes, yes. across the world. What's your question? Please keep it short. Hello, can you hear me? We can. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm Frank from Taiwan, and uh, I have two questions, mostly from the old users, because I've been a user for, since 2019. Uh, so the first, first question is, what's the percentage between old users and new users for the Spacecoin wallet? And the second one is, uh, I've seen many trading, selling, and buying uh, Spacecoin online. How are you going to solve that, this, question, this problem? Thank you. Uh, brilliant questions. I, I, I'm going to start with the second one. Um, uh, we, you know, despite the fact that there is, uh, uh, there is a lot of activity happening, we do not encourage and do not endorse it because there is a lot of scamming, um, you know, going on. And our intention is not to stop it by going into crypto. We actually want to facilitate it and just make it more organized so that it happens in places where there is safeguards, where there are mechanisms that prevent people from being scammed. So we see it as a huge vote of confidence in us. And because we cannot do it properly right now, because we are not a crypto and we cannot be you know, traded in all the right places, you know, we want to become crypto so that all the users who want to trade can be safeguarded, right? And you know, this is this is answer to your second question. And the answer to the first question is that you know, kind of given the, how rapidly we're growing and how many users are coming right now, the you know, kind of a lot of users who join and become the kind of you know opt into crypto, uh, more than half are going to be new users. Thank you very much. It's a great project. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Let's see if we can get through a couple more while we're here. I just invited up. I think he's just connecting. Opiemi. Is that how you pronounce it? I do apologize if not. Opiemi, are you there? I'm still connecting. Still connecting. I wasn't sure whether that was my connection or, or his. Now, I will I'll bring up one more as well. Really? Um, he's waving frantically as he connects. O OPM is now on um, Jess, if you want. Hi, how are you guys? Thanks. 
No, we're having connecting issues with it. Oh, we have really has come on O'Reilly. R L Y. Um, um quick question. Can we have a quick question? Yeah. Uh just wanted to get a clarification on because whether uh the actual app has a premium, right? And then I wanted to ask if the sweat wallet would have something like that to get <laughs> other um functionalities like minting. No, the intention is that the wallet is going to be your fintech app and it is not going to have health and fitness tracking and, uh, you know, working with our verification model. Uh, so steps tracking is going to remain in Sweatcoin. I, I'm not sure if I understood your, your question correctly. Should I repeat my question? Um, I, should, should I, 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 I think I understood it. Yeah. Um, and the question... Um, yeah, the best thing to say is that the premium subscription services are of some description, whether they are related to NFTs or not, um, where is, is yet to be seen. But you will be you, users will be able to pay in sweat to access premium subscription services. Is that um, accurate, or like correct? Yeah, great. The answer is the, the answer is yes. Okay, thank you. Great. We're going to take one more question because we've gone way over our time today. But um, Saif Al Rawahi was waving frantically at me. So this is when uh, emojis come into their own. Did you have a question for Oleg? Uh, yes. Hello. I am Saif. I am from the Middle East, specifically Oman. Uh, I, I joined late. So I have two questions, actually. Uh, one of them is uh, I know that the launch will be on summer. So uh, I want to know, do you know the uh, specific date or month will exactly be? This is why you shouldn't join AMAs late. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oleg, Oleg answered this question only 10 minutes ago, so I'm assuming you're very, very late to the AMA. Uh, so we are scheduling it for the summer. So uh, summer, Northern Hemisphere, so July, August, September, but we hope to announce the actual date of that um, uh, within the three to four week period. So stay tuned for that. It is definitely happening. It is definitely happening this summer. And uh, we're, we're all very excited and our communities will be the very, very first to hear. So stay tuned, all of you. Um, Charlie, I think we're going to have to close off the questions now because we've run way over. But we intend to do a lot more of these. Is that not true? And I think your cordant uh, voice, um, I think, is that people are voting for. <laughs> Happy to help. Happy to help. Thank you, everyone. It's been it's been really great having everyone here. And yeah, I hope we've answered some really useful questions. Thank you, particularly Oleg. Um, this Thank has been you, really guys. informative. And I would just like to close off by saying we are about to announce a new walkathon. Um, stay tuned. It's going to be posted on the Twitter with a form to sign up. We had a walkathon last week and it was so popular and oversubscribed that we've decided to do another one where users can 5x their earnings and up to, if, if you're lower ranked in the top 100, you'll still be able to get a 2x or a 3x on your Sweatcoin earnings. The walkathon will take place this Sunday. Um, all the details are about to be posted on Twitter, so please make sure that you stay tuned for that. Thank you, everyone, and hope to see you at the next one. Thanks, everyone, and see you soon. Do follow us all to keep up to date with uh, what's happening with uh, Sweat Economy, and we'll see you here again very, very soon. Thank you very much, guys, and it's so good to see some of the familiar faces that, you know, been on other AMAs. Uh, so keep coming and yeah, keep supporting us. Massive thanks. Thank you, everyone. Bye.